Hello Fix fans and welcome back to The Shed. We've got a little special treat for you today. You may have seen this guy online, a double shafted Kraken. How did a double shafted Kraken come about? Let's have a chat about it. So I purchased a bunch of blasters and one of them was this Rhino Fire. Now, the Rhino Fire is a wonderful bit of kit because it just looks ridiculous. It has great features such as two 25 round drum mags, a double barrels that articulate forwards and backwards as you shoot it, a dual stage flywheel trigger, pressing it initially will start the flywheels and pressing it a little bit further down will start the blaster blasting and it also has one motor powering two flywheels. So inside it has two motors and four flywheels. Hang on, one motor powering two flywheels? How could you ever do that? Well, that's where this guy comes in. The motors inside the Rhino Fire are dual shaft. They have a motor in the middle and a shaft on each end. Each end has a flywheel on it and that is how it blasts from one side to another from its little drums attached in the side there. If I wanted to upgrade this, I could just chuck a load more volts into it. So that's a well-worn upgrade path. Not the most reliable blaster if you do that. The stock motors have copper brushes instead of carbon brushes and can get worn out very, very quickly. So two strife cages, four Krakens. That will sort it out, but I haven't got two strife cages. I mean, I could print two strife cages and I haven't got four Krakens. But if a Kraken had two shafts, then you could replace it like for like, and you'd only need two Krakens and no flywheel cages. Good idea. So that's what got me to wanting to modify this guy. Now, the process I used was pretty ropey, I must say. It wasn't the most gentle. I did my best not to damage anything. I essentially followed some YouTube videos on replacing shafts in these little motors. And actually, this is pretty similar to replacing the shaft in something like a stock car motor. It's a two mil shaft. So I looked on the internet and I saw lots of videos of people replacing shafts in little 130 size motors, slot car motors like this, but they were using things that were two mil, like bike spokes. Now, I've got loads of bike spokes knocking around here. I do a lot of cycling and have a lot of bikes. So I pulled out some bike spokes. One of them, 1.7 mil, not quite big enough. The other one was a BMX one, two mil on the spot, but it had been painted yellow. So it had a factory coat of paint or powder coat or something on it that was yellow and that made it much much too thick for what I needed and I did attempt to sand it down and all the rest of it but then I realized that I might not get a good flywheel fit doing that so I opened up a package that I was sent some time ago and that includes some music wire so why have I got two mil music wire well I have a mini lathe and I had intended although the lathe isn't working at the moment because I haven't actually properly installed it I intended to use that to wind springs of two mil diameter wire which is roughly k26 to different specifications to fit the kind of blasters that K26 won't go in to see if I could get a bit of a stronger spring in them. That's a job for another day. What it did mean though, was I had something that was two mil that I could put through here. Now, I did get it through there, you can see it. You will have seen on Reddit, it does work. I fed it the full 12 volts from the totally safe bench power supply over there and it was flying. Now, I didn't do this particularly gently. What I did was I got the vise, which is behind me, popped this in there, popped a Allen key in the back of it and got various sockets and hammers and other things to try and press pull and tweak the shaft out of this motor. At one point I was even using pliers to lever up on the armature. It was all very bendy and very unhappy looking. We did get it done and the motor does run. However, if I'm going to do this for a second one, I'm going to have to be more gentle. I have various bits around here that I can probably use to manufacture something akin to a pinion press or puller that you would use on slot cars. So I will do that to make sure the next one is a little bit better treated because this one did suffer. The windings got marked by pliers and other things that I levered on it with. Because it's insulated wire, I had worried that the coating would be scratched off and it would short out. Thankfully not, but it does look a bit unhappy. The commutator at the end is plastic, and I managed to snap that with one of the press tools. So the comm is actually loose. The plastic sleeve is loose, and that's on top of the shaft. It's being held in place by all the bearings and spacers and other things in there, but that's not ideal either. So I imagine the lifespan of this particular motor might be quite short. I should also mention that there is no hole in the back of a Kraken for a shaft to come out of. So I did have to bang a hole in it with a drill bit, which was a bit ropey because the brushes and the bearing are just behind this bit of metal. And if you push them at the wrong angle, you can snap the whole thing. I couldn't remove the brushes because in this particular motor, they are in fact glued in. So I'll do two more. I'll put them in the Rhino Fire and I'm gonna come up with a clever way before then of doing it very, very gently. But yes, now when Out of Darts and Foam Blast were designing these motors, it seems they had dual shaft in mind. Luke has said on Reddit that that was something they considered, but of course, you're not selling many because you're only selling them to people who've got rhino fires. So unfortunately they didn't come like that from the factory. That's where modders like me come in. Hopefully I will get a jig made up, press a couple more shafts into these and get them in here and see what fun this thing can be with two Krakens. One of the main reasons for making a jig for this is because during the install process, I think the shaft may have got a little bent and we don't really want that because that'll induce vibration in the flywheels. There's about a 0.05 mil 
run out. Now, while there's no doubt that can be fixed with the old uh, machinist solution, we don't really want to resort to that because that's time consuming. It's better that it's straight in the first place. So that was a very quick run through of what we did there. We've got a fair bit coming up on the channel, nerf mod wise. There is some dinosaur stuff. There will be various things going on with the Terra Scout, which is behind me, and lots and lots of other reasons why you should subscribe. There's videos coming out about every two weeks for the next month or so in the run up to Foam Fest. So if you hit the subscribe button, you'll see those as they come out. There's a couple of cycling bits, but it's mostly nerf. As usual, socials and everything else in the description below, and I'll see you in the next one.